What is Escape from Tarkov? According to its website, Escape from Tarkov is a hardcore and realistic online first-person action RPG slash simulator with MMO features and a story-driven walkthrough. In reality, Tarkov shares a lot more DNA with games like Arma or the old Rainbow Six games, or you may even Ghost Recon, the tactical shooters of a bygone era. And this tactical shooter makes the most of looter shooter and RPG mechanics, which invokes the playstyles of cult classic single player shooter experiences like the Stalker and Metro series to bring an unparalleled sense of immersion. What's the good bullets? 7N. 7NB? Yeah, I'm just... You know how to do that, right? You can right click and hit install. Yeah. And that'll install the, uh, the good mag. Alright, so I'm gonna pull the red dot. I guess I don't really need to shoot this fucking... I'll keep that behind it. So the round in here is not good, in the chamber. No. You know how to cycle that? I do not. Shift R or Control R, one of the two of those. Cycle shift two. R. Nice. No, that was just a reload. Yeah, Shift R, that didn't work. Control uh, cycles the bolt. Uh, control R. Yeah, I can't see which round's in it. Yeah, the chamber's just a question mark. You need to check your chamber. Uh, yes. Is that Control T? Control T? No. Alt no. T? Shifty? Shifty. Shifty. Shifty, okay. Shifty. Which makes this game a tactical, hardcore, looter shooter RPG monstrosity. You know, a faster perge. Fast perge. What is a Thassaburger, you ask? A Thassaburger is Tarkov, or more accurately, an MMO with guns, like WoW with less Bobby Kotick and an AK-74, or a, guess more accurately, the RuneScape Wilderness, complete with M4s and the same Chinese gold farmers. So, why play it? Honestly, there isn't anything like Tarkov on the market. This isn't a Battle Royale game, and the developers go out of their way to say it. This isn't a Call of Duty clone, this isn't an Arma clone, even. This is, hands down, one of the most addictive shooters I have ever played. This game rivals a heroin addiction, in which I'm up all night playing it, and it's desperately affecting my interpersonal relationships. Thank god the US can't figure out its corona lockdown, because if I had to go back to work, I'd lose my job, because I would be unable to focus on anything other than the fact that I just want to go home and play some more fucking Tarkov. And maybe I'm just the kind of person that's vulnerable to this kind of game. I've played a lot of MMOs, I've played a lot of shooters, I've played every Far Cry, every Battlefield, every Call of Duty. I even love the Metro series, even that really shitty Exodus one that I thought about even making a video about because, frankly, it's disappointing. But it's been hard for shooters to keep that magic going for too long, and not a single shooter has kept me as enthralled as Tarkov. This game does an excellent job of keeping your pulse high and your palms sweaty. There's a mystery that goes on in the every level, every map, as you scoot around looking for more gear. And before I go into tearing this game down and talking about all the little things that bother me, I need to preface that this game is goddamn near perfect in my mind. If anything, I can justify the fact that I picked up a game to play with my friends as kind of an off thing. I've dumped so much fucking time into this game that I've had to stop myself from playing it just to make this video to talk about how much I enjoy playing this game. I'll be honest, I haven't felt this much of a need to play a game since my last stint of playing Total Warhammer, and I put 400 hours into Total Warhammer too. There's a little need to just keep hitting that next turn button that this game just fulfills in my heart. So if I haven't scared you away yet, I think it's time we get into the nitty gritty of what makes Tarkov Tarkov, and all the good things and admittedly suspicious things that concern me going forward. One of my biggest concerns for this game is that it's pretty much stuck in beta hell. Production on this game supposedly began in 2012, when the developers left their previous company to make their own sequel to essentially the game Contract Wars. Which means this game's rapidly approaching a decade of progress behind it. And with the alpha beginning in August of 2016, five years later, we're still in the open beta period. 
which puts Tarkov up there with other big mainstream failures like Star Citizen. And I know some people don't consider Star Citizen a failure, but a project that's been under works for that long and has no sign of finishing is in my opinion a failure. You can't spend this much development time without having absolute setbacks in production. And a lot of the problems that plague Star Citizen is problems that plague this game as well. There's serious feature creep going on here, and a lot of the stuff they promise on their website isn't even in the game yet. A lot of my opinions on feature creep and just these failures in development are very similar to what's going on on Star Citizen. And if you're curious with that, one of my favorite YouTubers, Mandalore Gaming, has one of the best videos ever seen discussing on a lot of the problems with that game as well, which I will link below. But that does put me in a weird position here. I'm about to be hypercritical of a game that is technically still in beta, but he is selling an edition of the game that's worth $150, and I'll get into that later. After a decade of development and five years of selling full price version of the game, there's a line you cross where you're no longer a beta game and you're just constantly under improvement. You gotta be critical of it at some point, you can't just excuse the entire game forever because it's in beta. But let's get back on task here. The Escape from Tarkov website declares this game is going to have a story-driven, scenario-based walkthrough as one of the multiplayer game modes, complete with raids on a large-scale location with your friends or alone. Which, despite having large multiplayer raids with your friends or alone, I don't think they've quite hit this story-driven, scenario-based walkthrough they've promised. The story reminds me a lot of how Dark Souls approached storytelling, in the way that the story is in the background and not really shoved into your face. You're not going to be interfacing with characters directly, and you could probably play a majority of this game without even realizing what's going on story-wise. There is a plot, but it's very much behind the scenes. There's also several bullet points that discuss finding concealed locations or useful information that'll lead you to understand what's going on, and all this doesn't really work when the game itself is very much designed around using their wiki or outside materials. Especially in-game maps are almost useless to me, as it's all written in Russian. And I don't speak Russian, so I don't really have a use for it. Maybe it's just not directed towards the kind of player I am, but personally, it would be exceptionally foolhardy to just wander around the maps and try to figure out what's going on and find loot without any sort of guide or even like outside help. The game even has its own Sherpa program, which has higher experienced players volunteer to help guide lower players. This is not a game that you go in and solve a mystery, it's very heavy on PvP, and if you go in just kind of looking for adventure, you're just gonna get shot. Escape from Tarkov lacks a lot of the protections that single player games offer to its new player base. This is only made worse by the fact that it's not very upfront with its information. Tarkov is a wiki game. A wiki game is any game that pretty much requires the use of outside sources to get your information from the game. The game is chock full of different systems and stats that it doesn't really bother to explain to you. In fact, one of the most egregious things I've noticed is that bullets have a penetration stat that the game never really explains, so you have to go outside of the game to really understand how ammo affects your target. Being a wiki game isn't necessarily the worst thing your game can be. A lot of very popular games are wiki games. In fact, Dark Souls, the game I mentioned earlier, needs a wiki to be played through properly in my opinion, as the stats are almost as hard to understand as this game's. My only real complaint is that their online guides and descriptions of the game never really match up with the actual gameplay of Tarkov itself. It's so hard to understand what you're getting into as a new player when the online guides are not representative of the game itself on their own website. They also have this weird fascination with cooperating with ex-enemies and the idea that the game may progress in unexpected directions. Even their trailer shows off people who were once fighting each other working together. That has never once happened in my almost 200 hours of playing this game. At this point, I don't think it's even likely to happen or possible. Almost every interaction I've had with a player that wasn't part of my party is immediately met with gunfire. There's no way of VoIP communication and the in-game callouts are basic at best. If you see another person, you're gonna fight. There's no allies made in the field. But it's not all doom and gloom. The game has a very good HP and weapon system behind it. The HP is entirely limb-based and has multiple HP bars and different ways of healing it, and lots of medical devices that are able to heal you in different ways. It adds a lot of depth to the healing mechanics. That doesn't make it necessarily realistic, but you feel authentic when you need to stop a bleed with a tourniquet and then apply medical aid to yourself. And this is a great point to jump into the developers making this game. And once you take the time to look into the director of the game and COO of Battlestate, 
you'll begin to understand why some of the decisions that were made in this game happened. This man right here is Nikita. I'd want to say, first of all, I want to say that my English is not perfect enough uh, because the tracksuit, it makes me more Russian and less human. Nikita is the game director and a very active member of the Tarkov community. And with a small deep dive into his Instagram account, you can see this man is a gun nut to the extreme. He's what happened when that dude you know from high school that's way too into Airsoft and really likes the Band of Brothers series went off to make a video game instead of joining the army. And I'm not trying to put him down either. This man has personality and he seems genuinely passionate about his game. He's got this small town vibe about him that reminds me of just other people who enjoy video games. It's almost concerning how much this game developer is a bit of an everyman. This man put together a game show presentation on publishing his own game which included memes about EA. Honestly, if he didn't have a job, I wouldn't be convinced this guy wasn't a moderator for r slash gaming. This dude is putting out the opposite of CEO vibes. Baseball cap actually have a knuckle duster in here. Look at this. Knuckle, knuckle, knuckle duster? You can punch in the face. A clarification, this is a plastic, plastic. plastic it's not like knuckle duster, it's like plastic. Think sorry, please, sorry, please, 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 and then again, it's the same guy that said his $150 version of the game would get removed for the beta version, but it's still here several years in the beta, which makes it seem like he just has no idea what's going on and kind of makes it up as he goes. And I feel like I'm being hard on him, but I almost wish he was more professional because it's gotten to the point where this has been going on for so long and the community feeds on this. It's attracting a certain kind of person, which is why I almost can't blame him for what's going to come up next. The biggest hurdle this game's ever gonna have to jump is its perceptions. One, this game isn't on Steam, and he actually already has said why. It's because it's money. He's concerned about the cash. Uh, what was a good idea to start from our our, our own platform, and uh, and of course we didn't want to pay Steam uh, lots of money, like uh, the big a big part of uh, upcoming revenues, and uh, <clears throat> which makes this next thing really obvious. This game has multiple versions. For an in-progress game that's still in beta, there's four purchasable versions of the game. It's not Star Citizen, but it's pretty bad. I understand that uh, what uh, do we want to achieve? You want money or you want to make some beautiful and interesting game. So these uh, guys over here, these titles, uh, the main goal for these uh, uh, titles is making money. It's not bad, like, uh, these projects are really good, uh, I like them mostly. And uh, for us, uh, there was a point that we need to make uh, something interesting, new, innovative, and we uh, didn't want to make some money from it. Like, n n like uh, this was not a goal for us. You have the starter version of the game, which gives you access to the beta and bare bones everything else. It claims you do get some bonus items here, but this feels pretty bare bones. When I first picked the game, I thought, wow, this seems pretty generous. I thought this was a pretty hardcore game, and I'm surprised they're giving me such good equipment to start off with. In reality, most of this stuff is pretty bad, and even though the guns are pretty good, it gives you some pretty crap ammo. So if you're not at the very beginning of a wipe, this stuff is pretty much useless to you. It's something to start off with, as a level one character would need something, but I feel left with the bare minimum. But a complaint that would be that the starter equipment changes based on which faction you pick, and essentially one starter equipment is much higher quality than the others. But that's not even worth getting into, when we still have three more editions to cover. Jumping into the next edition, you'll notice the first major change. Increased stash size. Hmm, what's that about? 
Well, in between every mission, you put all of your gear in a communal stash. That's where everything you're not currently using stays. And you'll notice that's, a uh, 100 more spaces. And before you start saying, well, I don't have a frame of reference for that, let me help you out here. A lot of the items in this game are one or two hexes in size. Even some of the bigger guns are only eight to 10 hexes, which means you've just acquired a huge amount of inventory space over someone who didn't buy your better version. But wait, it gets better. In fact, if you have this better version, you get a lot more starting items, including a lot more painkillers, medicines, ammo, gun types, equipment, and money. Now, I know what you're saying. Doesn't that seem a bit pay to win? You're right! It does! In fact, that's exactly what that is. If you buy a better version of the game, you get more shit to start off with, which is a huge advantage. And don't let that fool you. A lot of people on the internet would say, well, you know, all that stuff isn't that good and you're gonna lose it and really, in reality, you shouldn't fear losing your gear and you should really play for the end game and by the end of the game, it won't even matter what you started out with. You're not wrong, but boy, does it feel a lot better to start out with a shotgun. And the community does not like this one. A lot of people like to cite the fact that anyone can kill anyone and take their shit, but let me tell you, you're a lot harder to mug when you got more guns than someone else. And the big problem with this is, a lot of people say, well, once you start the game, it doesn't really matter, you know, because if you start out right now, you'll bump into people who have way more gear because they've been playing longer. But this is still an advantage for a level one versus a level one. This is still an incentive for someone to pay you more money to play the game. And the second tier is $30 more. You're now looking at a $74.99 purchase in US dollars. This is getting extreme. But wait, there's more. The next size up gives you another 100 inventory spaces. What the fuck? And what's this? A new thing, initially good standing with all in-game traders. That's right. At this point, you can start to skip some of the bullshit in this game and start getting even faster rep with traders, which means better gear faster and a wider variety of gear faster. Honestly, it's not worth my time to see here and go through it. You got an idea of what's going on with that. It's just more shit for a starting character. But that's not even the most egregious one. The $100 version isn't the worst version. There is a $140 version in this game. Like, what the fuck even is that? It's so hard to quantify. This game will sell you a version of the game that not only gives you more resources, more equipment, but a stash that is 680 units in size. That is 400 more than the starting stash of the basic version. That's almost three times the size of a starter player stash. And before you say, well, that's just for storing stuff, you can just sell all your stuff. The amount of convenience you get out of that is insane to me. I spent the first 150 hours grinding the stash because I needed a place to put my fucking shit. You can only play the game for so long before you actually are forced to start selling items you care about because you don't have the place to put it. If you're getting successful, you're playing well, you will run a profit in this game. You will bring back more than you leave with. That means you need a place to put that shit until you die. And if you don't have the stash space to put it, you're pretty much forced to sell shit you probably would want to use, which fucking feels bad, man. I don't know what's worse, the fact that this is like this or the fact they don't bother to hide it from people. Something like this is going to scare new players away faster than anything else. This looks pay to win is shit, even if it's not, even if you can mathematically go ahead and prove that like the reasons these are here is because it doesn't matter in like the 100 to 1000 play range, it doesn't matter because one look at this looks like you're paying for an advantage. Even to my eyes as someone who's played over 200 hours of the game, this is an advantage in my opinion. At the very least, it's convenience. And I get it, they need the money. But you're going to need the money of people constantly buying the game and getting new players as well. You can't justify that like you need to support the game and pay $140 if you also don't care about the new player experience in any way. This is possibly the worst thing that happens in this game. The stash isn't something that's easily upgradable either. It's tied to some weird phone game element they have behind the scenes. The stash and several other areas of the games are upgraded by a hideout system, which has no purpose in a multiplayer online shooter. It's essentially something you'd find in Clash of Clans. And as much as I'd love to go along criticizing all the little bits and pieces of the hideout system, honestly, it gets changed so much I don't even want to. Like, they stealth patch this shit on a regular basis. There's not even patch notes to track what they're changing. It's baffling to me, honestly. Like, 
you can't track what they're changing and they'll just keep changing it based on how the current economy is doing. I don't know if that's what they permanently want to do for the rest of the game, but it makes it really hard to talk about, so I'm going to skip it entirely. Which is fine, because the most egregious thing in there is the stash, and where to even start? It's an essential part of gameplay, you use it to craft new items and hold non-unique quest items, all of your gear, weapons, ammo, meds, everything goes through the stash. Later on you'll get access to high-end cases for storing item types, but those are exceptionally rare and expensive. And that concept in itself isn't the craziest thing I've ever heard of. If you have a standard inventory and then you have the option to buy expensive cases to store stuff you want, I'm not hurt by that. If everyone had the same inventory and then I could buy, hey, I want more guns, I'll buy gun boxes, that's my personal choice. But the game hamstrings you. It starts you off on a standard account with such a small stash, you can barely do anything with it. And the only way to get the high level version of the stash is a long upgrade tree. And that's tied to level, income, quests, everything in this game. Essentially, by buying the higher version of the game, you're skipping hours of content. Hours! There is no other game that if it was more mainstream than this, they would accept it. If this was a Call of Duty game, people would be burning it alive. But it's getting a pass. It's practically an indie game and everyone thinks it's real hardcore, so fuck it. Honestly, it's a decision that's never made much sense to me. You'll spend hours of playtime just shuffling items around in your inventory. It's not like it's a convenience thing. I would literally end a mission with my friends and spend the next 15 minutes or so just trying to get gear in and out of my inventory. Putting it on me, taking it back off, just trying to shuffle everything around and find a nice, perfect spot just so I can play the game. It's almost not fun. I mean, who would enjoy a game like this? I don't understand it. I mean, honestly, who'd even make a game like this? Who finds it fun just to shuffle around squares of different shapes? Unless... No, it can't be. There's... No. My god. What a feast there could be If we could create A socialist state That cared for the people like me I am the man who arranges the blocks That descend upon me from up above they come down and I spin them around Till they fit in the ground like hand in glove Sometimes it seems that to move blocks is fine And the lines will be formed as they fall Then I see that I have misjudged it I should not have nudged it after all All joking aside, I really do love this game. I only wish that the developers would focus their vision a little more than what they're currently doing. As we speak, Nikita's gone on to work on a new project based on Tarkov, linked to Tarkov, and in many ways, uh, a successor to Tarkov. However, the problems he's fixing in this game require him to use the finances from the game he's still making. This game at one point was supposed to be an alternate mode to Tarkov, but has kind of spread off into being some sort of competitive shooter. I understand that making a new game requires finances, but something that uses the framework from a game that you haven't finished yet, and your $150 version of the game that promised all future DLC doesn't include this version of the game. So you're making an add-on with the money from Tarkov that uses Tarkov statistics and game engines and accounts, but you're selling it separately. It seems really shady. I can understand wanting to move on after almost a decade of progress, and being frustrated with the fact that the project probably isn't even close to being in the condition he wants it to sell. However, I would recommend that he really narrows down his vision. He should make Tarkov the best game that it is. Tarkov already isn't exactly what he set out to make, but it has a following. It's a lot of fun to play. It should be made the best game it could be, and then he should move on to something else.
In conclusion, I love this game, but I don't know if it's something I can recommend. I could go on for another hour talking about the individual problems and balance and server registry and everything else that goes into this game, but I would be beating a dead horse. I've gotten my major complaints out of the way, and if I haven't scared you away, buy the game. It's a lot of fun, honestly, and there isn't anything else like it on the market. However, there is the other problem of that it's been quite a bit since they've done a wipe. The game is frequently getting restarted and setting every account back to zero, and right now we're on the kind of far end of one of those. So my advice to any new players wanting to get in the Tarkov may be just to wait. Next time they do a major update for the game, they'll reset everyone's account and you don't have to worry about getting seal clubbed by people with night vision and thermal optics. And if you do decide to get into the game, please use external help. Use the wiki. Use anyone you can find to get more information, as the game is really rough without help. I'd, uh, stay off Reddit, though. Those guys are a little aggressive. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And for the ending, I will read you with a special treat from our fine Reddit community. And now for our evening broadcast, a dramatic reading with Sheep. Oh no, his white knight. Go back and read it again. I bet you're one of those. Whoa, I want a milsim, guys. Probably coward in fear at my stomp stomps. 75% survival rate, 3k PMC kills. Trust me, I have no hard time killing you. Want to be milsim, boys. Thanks for the lols. I can tell my kind pisses you off. Look, if you're dedicated to the game enough where it bothers you that you're at a disadvantage, you should care enough to buy Edge of Darkness. <laughs> Games like Super Mario is fun, but Tarkov is serious. Your most important moments of life, I believe, also couldn't be described as fun. But you will remember it for the rest of your life. A first kiss, Kobe's last game, a fight, kid's birth, parent's death, etc. It's not fun, but important. Fun is not bad, but it fades away much faster as God kills. What? <laughs> what? Tarkov does not cater to less skilled players. That's what draws me to it the most. I'm tired of developers adding some bullshit mechanics and items to games that feel like you died to that rather than being outplayed. Sure, it has its moments. But games like Valorant, for example, really feels to me as some gimmicky knockoff to Counter-Strike that almost makes the game too easy. <clears throat> the only dweebs who actually say this play like one to two raids a night and crab walk around looking for packs of sugar. You don't enjoy playing fast? That's okay, but strength and endurance were fun to play with, and it provided something to work slash grind for in the end game. Skills should be something we want to level up. I realize fun is a hard concept for a portion of this community to understand, but perhaps you'd go through life a little less bitter if you embraced it. If you stop thinking like there was an intended way to play, you might see things differently. Reading your posts, you play for loot and making money first, and whatever second. There are lots of players like this. Well, I think it's silly and don't like it, there is nothing wrong with it, and the game can be played however you want. I play for fights and situations. I couldn't care less about making money. Because of this, I'll give up rushing a loot spawn in favor of rushing a position that could hold the loot spawn and kill the players who SJ6 for loot instead of being aware of their surroundings. I could care if you butthole a GPU. I could have gotten. Your dog tag is worth more to me. At the end of the wipe, I feel like I have improved and gotten better at this game. I've ended each wipe with more money than I could spend, which has really devalued loot for me. The rubles will wipe, and for some faints their interest in the game and move on. The skill I gain from that wipe, from focusing on PvP, only makes my wipe even better. You should be able to memorize a single map pretty well in maybe 20 raids, so 10 to 15 hours of playtime. You could probably master a single map in 20 to 30 hours of playtime. That includes knowing what type of loot spawns where, what the common hiding spots are and PMCs and where the scabs spawn. At that point, you should main that map for money while you learn another map. 
You could probably master all five casual maps in only under 200 hours of gameplay.